Hello and welcome to Tutorial to You. My name is Yannick and in this video we are going to take a look at how you can set up a background worker service in ASP.NET Core. Now before we dive deeper into the topic, just let me tell you that if you're interested in C Sharp, especially in ASP.NET, go ahead, like this video so that we know that we should produce more of this content and subscribe to our channel because you don't want to miss that content that we are just creating for you, my friend. Alrighty, so now let's get started. Let's dive deeper into ASP.NET Core Background Worker Services. So what are service workers and why do we even need them? Over time, a web application receives many requests. Now this is what happens during the runtime of a typical web application, right? Now imagine that we want to run a long task in the background as the application starts and we want it to be continued as long as the application is running. Well, Microsoft suggests injecting the background task as a hosted service into the dependency injection framework. Now let's jumpstart creating a new web API project and then host a background service in it. Alrighty, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to open up Visual Studio 2022 in that scenario here. And then we want to search for ASP.NET Core Web API because we want to set up that Web API project here. Pay attention, that one here below is F Sharp. You want to pick the C Sharp one. Alrighty, so select it and then hit next. Let's give it a name. We could call it um, like service worker test or whatever. Let's save it. And then we choose .NET 6. We don't need any sort of authentication. Just hit create. All right, before we continue on that topic, please give me like 15 seconds to tell you something pretty amazing. We offer a C-Shop Progress Academy. It takes 21 days and it turns you into a full stack developer. So we will teach you ASP.NET Core and Angular in depth. You will learn how to really build entire real world applications, including so, so many content. And believe me, there is no better way out there to improve your C-Sharp skills in such a short amount of time. So if you're interested in boosting your c -sharp skills, if you're looking to get your first job as a programmer, or you simply want to become a full stack web developer, go ahead and check out our 21 day c -sharp Progress Academy. You can find the link in the description below, or you can find an info card popping up in the top right corner right now. All right, here we got our new project. So let's switch into program.cs. Let's open that up. And the first thing that we want to add is we want to add a hosted service type of background worker service. So simply go ahead and call the builder, which is actually for sure taking care of building our web application, right? So builder.services.addhosted service. So this is very important. Call add hosted service type background worker service. We will create that class, right? So it's not existing yet. We will create a background worker service, but we want to add it here already. So now what we want to do is we want to add that class. So simply hover above it, show potential fixes, and then you can see generate class background worker service in new file. And this is exactly what we want to do. So on the right side, you can now see a background worker service file popping up. You can see it's underlined right here in red, right? So switch over to the background worker service. Let's first of all, set it to public. Public, there we go. And next step, what we want to do is we need to inherit that and the next thing that we want to do is we want to implement an interface here which is called I hosted service makes sense right because here in program CS we for sure want to add a hosted service so this is why we uh, implement the I hosted service here in the background worker service class that we have just created now in order to fix the implementation errors that we got right here simply again show um, potential fixes and then implement the interface and you can see that we need to start async and a stop async task. So simply click on that and now we got them both implemented here in our new class. Okay, so we want to for sure lock something here so that we know that everything is running correctly once we started the service. So let's implement a read only I logger type background worker service. And let's simply call it logger as suggested. We can add an underscore here. And then we need to have a constructor. So simply write down CTOR, hit tap, tap. There we got our background worker service. And for sure it takes a I logger uh, from the dependency injection of type background worker service. Let's call it logger. 
and let's assign it here. So logger equals to logger. All right, so this is just so that we are able to log something to validate that our service is working then. Great, so first thing that we wanna do is we want to log as soon as the service is starting or is stopping. So here we've got start async and stop async. So that's a great moment to simply call the logger, right? logger.log information. And here we can simply say service started. And let's just copy that over and paste it here in the stop async too. Let's say service stopped. And then we simply want to return here, return task.complete task. And we want to return the same for the stop async. Awesome. So what we want to do in the start async, here we know that our service is started, right? And let's create a while loop. And every second we simply want to do something in this scenario, we simply want to log an additional stuff, but you could for sure also do something else, right? So this is basically where your main code takes place then. So while true, here we got our while loop. We simply call the logger again, just use an underscore here, logger.log information. And uh, we want to log worker running at, uh, let's add a time here, I guess that's pretty cool. So let's add a time. And uh, we can simply take the date time, um, what is it, date time offset, dot now there we go so worker running at now next up let's add some delay here so task dot delay and we delay it by milliseconds so 1000 milliseconds is like one second for sure and then we can add cancellation token here and we want to call wait there we go and you will see that each second we will then see that the worker is running at a specific time right we can add a, a space here okay now in that scenario, you can for sure tell that that while loop is never ending, which is quite fine because we want to keep the task running, right? So this is why we use a while loop, which is only true. And you can see this underlined here, unreachable code detected, but that's fine. As I said, for background worker service, right? In that scenario, we want to repeat the stuff over and over again. We want to keep it running because you want to have a continuous check, for example, for, well, do I need to send emails? are uh, some specific conditions met in a database or something else, right? So this is how you could potentially check it then. And once we shut down the application, the worker service, however, will stop anyway. However, you for sure may want to cancel this so that you will finally let uh, the worker come to an end, whatsoever. And this is where we now switch from while true to false, right? So cancellation token dot is cancellation requested. So while there's no cancellation requested, we keep running our service. Now let's switch this over to asynchronous state. So instead of um, calling task delay wait, let's make use of more professional async. So public async task start service. And for sure we can now remove the wait here and can instead switch to await. So await task delay, that's more professional, very nice. So now you can see that this one here is red underlined. And what we can do is we can simply remove it now because our while loop takes care about returning here because it's asynchronous using a wait now. So task delay a thousand milliseconds, including the cancellation token, which is now running while we have no cancellation requested. All right, so let's start our application right now. And if you take a look at the solution explorer, and you open up the controllers and you go into the weather forecast controller, you can see that we have a route from localhost and then the name of the controller, which is weather forecast. So let's try to open it up now. And if you wanna know how you open it up, which port you have to use, simply open the solution explorer, go to properties and go to launch settings here, and then check for your HTTPS URL, you got that right here. So simply take that over, bring it here into the browser, at slash weather forecast and you can see that it's not opening up and that's quite fine right so the url won't work now and the reason why it doesn't work is that the service that's supposed to work in the background is blocking the process and this is not our expected behavior right so our background service that we have right here is right now blocking our application now fortunately dotnet has solved this problem out of the box our background worker service needs to inherit from the background service class right so background service is an abstract class 
with an abstract method that runs asynchronously in the background as the service starts up. And this will fix the problem of our blocked application right now. So go to our background worker service class, simply scroll up and instead of using the iHosted service, switch it now to background service. And if we take a closer look on that, simply select it and press F12 to dig deeper into it, you can see that the background service implements the iHosted service, which we have implemented before. And you can see here, start async and stop async, right? But you can also see this abstract task execute async. And this abstract task execute async is running asynchronously in the background when the service starts up. So this is the reason why our program will then no longer be blocked. Let's first of all switch over to our background worker service. You can now see that we for sure have to um, take that abstract task right execute async we want to implement that so hover above background worker service show potential fixes let's implement the abstract class that we have right here so i'll implement the abstract method right now but the problem isn't solved yet the start async method still confirms the i hosted service so this start async still belongs to our background service interface here to the I hosted service, right? To obey the list code substitution principle, the background service runs the start async method synchronously. And alternatively, the background service class exposes the execute async template method and runs it in the background. So let's move the code for the long running logic, which we got here in our start async, that while loop here. Let's take that and let's bring it into our execute async right here. In that way, it runs in the background without blocking the rest of the application setup. Now, consequently, when we run the app, both the weather controller and the background service will work parallelly. Great. Now, let's get that to, uh, to work here. So, protected uh, async override task execute async. Instead of cancellation token, here it's called stopping token. That's pretty fine. We can just switch it over to stopping token that's working. And since we are now using the background service and no longer the I hosted service, we can completely get rid of that start async and stop async if we like. So if we remove it entirely, everything will still be working. And if we now finally start the application, you will see that in the bottom right corner, our worker service will start working. Now there we go working uh, worker running right every second, it will now get executed. And here we got our Swagger UI. So I, uh, our application is now loading and showing the Swagger UI because that's configured in that template that we're using by default. And um, yeah, so it's not blocked anymore. Our worker is running. Whatever we do here, if we try something else, it doesn't really matter in the background, the worker is running. So now you know how you can run your code, which you want to execute well during the lifetime of your application over and over again. Let's say for example, every second, Right now we're only logging information, but that could be anything else, right? So basically we started here and looked at that from scratch. Um, the simplest solution to get started is to simply use the out of the box background service, which is not blocking, but we for sure wanted to explain you the problem if you're using an I hosted service that is blocking your application and how you can switch over to the background service, which solves this specific problem. All right, so if you know how it works, it's actually quite simple. Awesome. All right, so now you know how to set up ASP background worker services successfully and how you can run your code asynchronously in the background of your application over and over and over and over again. So if you like that video, give it a thumb up right now and leave a subscribe so that you no longer miss any of our high quality ASP.NET Core and c -sharp videos. And if you really want to transition to another c -sharp level and become a full stick developer, check out our 21 day c -sharp Progress Academy. You can find the link in the description below.